Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, we're going to talk about Rebels. No, not Star Wars Rebels. Uh, not that there's a lot of difference. Anyway, back in Mercadian Mask Block, they gave us the Rebel creature type. Now, there was a few... What they did was, this was, Lynn Civy was the, the absolute queen of the Rebels. Uh, they called them gators at the time, as in one who gates, but I never understood why they didn't call them recruiters. But anyway, three mana, one, three, but her real shining star ability is you pay X and tap to fetch a rebel from your deck into play. Now, and, and then she's got the extra ability of putting... <laughs> in a roundabout way, resurrecting a dead rebel. You put it on the bottom of your deck, and then you go and get it again. Now, she was not the only one. As a matter of fact, this card was so busted that, okay, <laughs> many moons ago, we had blocks. You had uh, big set, small set, small set. Not that long ago, but... And Wizards actually supported a block-constructed format. It was kind of... Uh, just in case you want a format smaller than standard, you could only play with those three sets. And in Mercadian Mass Block, Lynn Civy got banned because she was so powerful. Now, yeah, banned and blocks, not a hard thing to do, but it's not even supported anymore. But anyway, she was not the only one. They started the curve at one drop, one mana. So, and the original cycle from Mercadian Mask you went up. Like your one drop got you the two drop. Of course, you had to have, you know, you're paying one more mana. So three mana gets you a two drop, but that's on your one drop. So you could go up the chain uh, from the sergeant to the lieutenant. And Lieutenant Dunbar there is so uh, the lieutenant you can continue here to go up the chain now the lieutenant gets you the captain i don't own the captain so we're going to skip the captain and go straight up to uh, the commander and then from the commander you go up to the sky marshal and that's as high as the actual gating cards got now it in, in the next set Nemesis, the one where they printed a Lin Civy, we got to go down. Oh, no, 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 no. We're still going up. The At the same time they did the Rebels, they did the Mercenaries. And the reason why Rebels were so much better than the Mercenaries is, number one, Lin Civy, and number two, the Rebels got a bigger creature a better, a higher CMC creature. Whereas the mercenaries, you had to start from the big one first and go down. And so it never really took off. And that was pretty much it for the rebel getters, the recruiters, if you will, until we got to Time Spiral. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Technically, this was a defiant vanguard. Uh, was part of the kind of where they flipped the mirror. It's the rebel that went down. No, it's still going up because it's a three mana up to four. Yeah. And then Time Spiral gave us the scout just to get another rebel out there. And then Future Sight gave us the. Uh, while it's uh, similar but different, you actually got to bring it from the graveyard to play. So that was a neat little aspect, kind of uh, some some synergy there with Lynn does a similar thing. Now, mana-wise, I don't have a lot, Marble Diamond, and, and of course the Bauble. Now, this is a very block-centric deck because it's not like we've had a ton of Rebels. Every now and then, they'll print some. 
but for the most part, they were all in Mercati mask. Now, the rest of these, I, I'm going to try to show you these by sets here. We're going to go through Mercadian Mask first so you can see the bulk of it. The Ballista Squad. Now, the a lot of these are just filler. Like, we would not consider playing this card if it did not have the Rebel subtype. But since there aren't that many Rebels, we've got to, like, take what we can get. I'll be honest with you. And you'd be surprised how often some of these less than cards, like the Ballista Squad, actually produces some value. Thermal Glider, Pro Red is not a bad thing. Along with the Nightwing Glider, one of the more popular colors. Chomano is the man. Now, y'all have seen my Chomano. Do I have Chomano? Is he one of the ones I hadn't finished yet, or have I finished him? Anyway, Chomano plus Pariah is sweet. I don't have Pariah in here because it's not about him. It's about rebels. Well, your rebel friends now. Anyway, uh, we'll see. Pious Warrior. Steadfast God. Now, that is it for Mercadian Mask. We are going to go to the next set, which was Nemesis, which had, you know, two to speak of, Lightbringer and Lawbringer. I'm running one from Onslaught. Tapping a creature can be not bad. I mean, here again, our win condition is playing dudes and turning them sideways, which is kind of scary. Because that's not always an effective win con. Uh, then our next one, of course, we have Sword Dancer, Rebel Squad, Soul Charmer, Shield Dancer, and Mercenary Informer. Kind of the turncoat. Um, and it, if you caught somebody playing Mercenaries... Man, three mana just to put it on the bottom? That's tantamount to exile, just about. Uh, then we go to Time Spiral. And, of course, we got the Outrider, the Knight of the Hokey Pokey, the Seekers, the Zelia, Planar Chaos. Give us these three. And then Future Sight. Now, I love, this was the first time that they did full art, like, well, cards and packs. And they did a common of each color. And they did the full art. And by the way, spoiler season for that was crazy, because we were like, full, this artist got commissioned to do, uh, to do a, a full piece of art, oh my god, you know, and how we knew that, I, I don't know, but. Uh, they were all vanilla creatures. But anyway, that's the first time we saw them. And that's where our Rebels sat until Lorwyn. Now, the only changeling Rebel I'm running is Mirror Entity because, you know, why or anything else? The Avon did have flying, and I thought about that. I still may at some point. But the Mirror Entity... Is is the real deal, especially for a tribe that needs help. Because I mean, you know, the rebels. You didn't see a rebel champion in there because they never made one. So we got to do that on our own. So we're running Crusade, Glorious Anthem, Honor the Pure, Spear of Heliod. Dictate of Heliod, Hall of Triumph, Obelisk of Erd, and our, looks like an artifact, but we all know is actually a sorcery, Coat of Arms. I say that because 
you don't just play the coat of arms and just just to have it out there. Oh, I've got five men, I throw it out there because somebody is going to slap you in the face with your own coat of arms. Somebody's going to throw down. Oh, look, I get you know, I play Avenger of Zendikar, I get all these plants, and now they're ridiculous, and you didn't see this coming. So, bam, yeah, that's why. Now, uh, let's look at. Okay, <laughs> here's the funny part. In staying on theme with Rebels and Mercadian Mask, now granted, we have enough creature or you know team boost here to where it could get kind of scary. But in Mercadian Mask, everything was a little less than. So, here's our removal suite. And actually, there's kind of more than... First off, the future site gave us the a, a tutor or a, a, a recruitable pacifism. Now, I, I've listened to Mark Rosewater's podcast along with many other podcasts, but for a long time. And I know, there's one thing that I know, that tribal thing, the super type tribal, or the, I'm sorry, the card type tribal, will not ever come back. Uh, they may reprint existing cards, but for some reason they say it does not work within the rules because um, cards of different types can't share a type, I guess. I don't know, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Artifact creature, and now we have artifact enchantment. I I don't know. Maybe he has said that so long ago that um, design technology has improved, but we still haven't seen anything tribal. I would love to see them revisit tribal, but it doesn't look like they will. For some reason, they're hesitant about it. But this is a neat interaction to where you can use your gator or Lynn Sibby herself to go and fetch up this version of pacifism. And yeah, we're, you know, paying one more mana for it if we draw it. But yeah, we've got divine offering because we don't like artifacts, apparently. Uh, Pillar of light, vow of duty, celestial purge, condemn. Now, of course, we're running the Mass Calcify because we're playing Mono White, so why wouldn't we? Pacifism itself. I think Pacifism hold, holds the holds the record here. I think it's our only white border card I could fit into the deck. Revoke Privileges and, of course, Oblivion Ring. Which, by the way, have y'all noticed Oblivion Ring has stopped getting printed? It's reprinted in other sets as much. They're using the other versions... It's because of the of the quirky rules trick. If you're not familiar with it, because O-ring, the way the information is presented, it being in two different sentences, you can hold on. I, I, I'm going to try to explain this, but I may mess it up because you know y'all know me. When it comes into play, that's the big thing. So you cast O-Ring, and you target your opponent's whatever. Scary creature. Scary artifact. And you cast O-Ring. O-Ring comes into play. You put the first ability onto the stack, and then... You sacrifice it. You put on the stack. You sacrifice your O-ring to something else that lets you sacrifice a permanent. And the second ability of O-ring goes onto the stack on top of the first one. So when the second ability resolves, there's nothing that has left play. So nothing happens. And then that goes off. And then the first ability happens and exiles a permanent and it never comes back because there's no o-ring to leave play now so that's the reason why 
we're not seeing O-ring as much as anymore, and we're seeing alternate variants that are worded just a little differently. So we in this deck do not have a, you know, enchantment sacrifice outlet because this has been in there forever. This is actually a really, really old deck of mine that I just kind of updated with a few cards here and there. Um, I, I didn't update it greatly because, you know, it's it, it's kind of stock, to be honest with you. Um, let's look at Fire Shrieker. Now, Coordinated Barrage is, is it's one of those white tribal cards, and, you know, I figured we couldn't leave home without it. Uh, we're playing Mono White, so Brave the Elements and Armored Ascension are kind of necessary. Now, Harsh Mercy is not a good card, <laughs> but every now and then it will thin the board. It's not going to wipe the board, but it will thin the board because not everybody's playing a tribal deck. So, uh, I mean, a lot of times you've got elves and humans and angels and whatever out there. But, yeah, everybody's going to pick the the tribe that's most beneficial to them. But it's a white tribal-ish card, so I felt like we had to use it. Now, City's Valor is obviously in there because, you know, it's her name. It, and if I'm... It, it's hard for me to build a deck around a commander and not use their personal cards. Which, by the way, my last Jace should be here momentarily, just in a few days. And that'll be the last actual Jace card I need. Uh, well, Jace Planeswalker that I need for the deck. And it'll have every Jace that's ever been printed. Now, I don't know. I kind of want to wait to see the full spoiler of Allegiance. Because we might, I don't know, we might get a Jace. I don't think we will. Um, I know he's there in the storyline. And I know he's obviously important to Ravnica. But I think the first two Ravnica sets, or guilds and allegiance, are just showing us how Ravnica exists in the now. And then the story is going to pick up and blow up, evidently, in the third set, and that's when I think we'll see a little bit of Gatewatch. We won't see nothing like the Gatewatch that we saw earlier, but we'll see a little bit. We've got Sanctified Charge, and I'm not going to lie. Sanctified Charge, there, there are legit a thousand cards better than this, but uh, dang it, it caught my eye. It was shiny, and it is kind of on theme. It's kind of a little less than, but First strike, this is a potential combat blowout, plus the plus two. Elixir of Immortality, because I'm not sure why it's been so long. Um, evidently, I got milled at some point. Mark of Asylum is going to prevent from those nasty pestilence or, py or uh, pyroclasms and junk like that. Uh, well, nowadays, starve extinctions. And then unquestioned authority to put on, you know, whatever creature that is ailing us, or, well, it is going to win us the game. As far as non-basics, <coughs> don't have a lot, of course, the secluded step cycle away if we don't need it. The crossroads. To Missville Plains. Now, I'll be honest with you, I tend to run the Plains a lot, uh, the Missville Plains, just because it is a Plains in mono white. It counts toward your Armored Ascension. And, yeah, it's a plane that comes into play tap. But it gives you, you know, a marginal benefit. Especially in this deck where you can tutor out the creatures from the deck into play. So, it's very easy to get, you know. And then, of course, we have Encroaching Waste. Now... That's what I've got for Rebels. Like I said, it is not a particularly strong tribe because it's one that was supported once, and that's it. It's never been supported again. So maybe we'll go to a you know world where there's supporting Rebels, but right now it just hasn't happened. 
Oh, and I guess that's what I have got for for this one. I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. I've, I've got our, our next deck already built. It's uh, going to be part of a cycle. Now, I don't have all five of the decks done, so they're not going to be like shotgun in order, but I started them all at the same time. And as weird as it would have it, what you would think would be the hardest one to do, I got done first. Hmm. Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But right now, I think we're going to shuffle and cut. <laughs>